entertainment talking sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. We got a big, big game coming up this week for the New York Giants. Of course, every game going forward is going to feel like a playoff game. It just is. Right now, the New York Giants and the Washington football team sit tied atop the division. Um, the Giants, of course, owning the tiebreaker with only four weeks to play, and the Giants have a very challenging schedule, particularly in the next three games. Washington, of course, goes to San Francisco this week. They'll be playing at four, and we'll see what happens after we play at one o'clock, but we can only control what we can. We're going up against a pretty good Arizona Cardinals team. The Cardinals were a team coming into the year that a lot of people were very high on. They saw the growth of Kyler Murray over last year, and a lot of people thought they'd be the sleeper coming into this season. And they got off to a great start before the bye. Uh, on the year, however, they are 6-6. Six and six. At the bye, they were 5-2. and two. Since then, they've lost four of their five contests. And really, they should have lost their last five. They beat Buffalo on a Hail Mary. Kyler Murray, by all accounts, has a shoulder injury. And we'll see how recovered he is this week. Arizona now has dropped three in a row, including losses to the Rams, the Patriots. And I cannot remember the other team off the top of my head. But... The bottom line is, Kyler Murray does not look like the same quarterback he once did at, you know, at one point in the season. And a lot of that must have to do with the fact that he's nurturing that right shoulder injury. And us as Giants fans should know better than anybody, injuries are a part of the sport. Of course, Daniel Jones missed last week against Seattle. A lot of us thought going in that the Giants were going to struggle. Um, you know, we built our offense around that run game. But Seattle, of course, coming in at the third best run defense in all of football. And even without Daniel Jones being even more predictable, the Giants were still able to run for 190 yards on the ground. And make no mistake about it, Arizona's going to know that's exactly what the New York Giants are trying to do in this football game. The question is, will Arizona be able to stop it? And will Kyler Murray be the same quarterback he has been at certain points in this season? I've said it countless times. People have asked me two, three weeks ago, what was the most winnable game left on our schedule of what was being deemed challenging games after the Bengal contest. And I have said routinely, Arizona. I think it is our most winnable game on the schedule, even including the Seattle game, especially when you factor in that Daniel Jones wasn't playing in it. Now, I'm not guaranteeing victory, but I'm telling you, I think we have a very good chance in this game. For the simple reason, I think we stack up very well in the trenches. Arizona this year decided to go out there and draft Isaiah Simmons, who's a, a, guy, a guy that a lot of New York Giants fans wanted with the pick this year, and I still think he's going to be a very good player in the pros. I was always very outspoken that I thought we needed to take an offensive tackle, and personally, I think that's something that Arizona should have probably addressed in this draft as well, even though they definitely needed some help with that defense. And when you just look at the numbers, Arizona's defense isn't horrible this year. I think they're like middle of the pack if I remember correctly. But when you look at some of the teams they've gone up against, it's kind of like Daniel Jones last year. You know how people say that he picked apart bad teams? It's kind of the same thing with this Arizona Cardinals defense. The Cardinals defense has only had three games in which they've surrendered less than 20 points. Those three games came against the Washington football team week two when Dwayne Haskins was still at quarterback. It came against Andy Dalton week six, when, uh, or week five, I think it was, whatever it was, week six, uh, when they had a backup quarterback there with the Dallas Cowboys, and it came against the New York Jets, who's everybody, you know, who everybody has held in check for the most part outside of the Oakland Raiders last week. If you look outside of that game, they gave up 20 points or more to several opponents, including the last three weeks where it's been really bad. They gave up 28 points to the Seahawks, 38 points to the Rams just last week, 30 points to the Buffalo Bills, and 34 points to the Miami Dolphins since the bye. So there's no doubt in my mind that I think the New York Giants are going to be able to move the football on this team, especially if Daniel Jones is 100%. And of course, that's going to be a big storyline coming into this game. Is Daniel Jones fully recovered? Now, by all accounts today, Daniel Jones did practice with the first team with the New York Giants, and it sounds as if he's probably going to get the start. Now, if he gets the start, the question will be, will he be limited in any way, shape, or form? We need him to go out there, and if he does go out there, I think we all hope that he's 100%. We don't want to risk re-aggravating that injury. As far as the Cardinals go, DeAndre Hopkins was on the injury report, but by, from, from what I heard, I think he practiced, uh, I think, full capacity today, and he's kind of been on that injury report throughout the year. So I, I expect DeAndre Hopkins to be in there for this contest. Now, some notable Giants that may miss this contest outside of Daniel Jones, Blake Martinez, who missed, I think, a drive or two last week for the New York Giants and has been a huge part 
of this defense in the middle, along with him, Darnay Holmes. Both of them did not participate in practice today. Now, we're going to have to wait and see what that means, whether or not they'll play. I would guess that they'll probably both be game-time decisions. If Martinez is forced to miss the contest, I would expect probably Devontae Downs to take his place. And you may see a lot more of Xavier McKinney if Darnay Holmes is forced to miss this contest because you would probably shift Logan Ryan into that slot role. Also, from what has come out by the New York Giants, Logan Ryan will be the mic for this football team. He'll be the captain of the defense, essentially, if Blake Martinez is forced to miss the contest. So there is the injury report for this game. But for me, it's the next man up. That's been the philosophy and my strategy of this team all year. It's the way I've felt. And the Giants have been able to overcome injuries all year. Why should this be any different? Last week, we didn't have our quarterback. Barkley went down week two. Obviously, DeAndre Baker, the whole situation before the year started. It's the next man up, and the New York Giants have to find a way to overcome it. And lately, they've been able to do that. Over the last four weeks, these two teams have been complete polar opposites. The Giants are hitting their stride. Arizona seems to be hitting a wall. Like I said, they've, should've, they, they've lost their last three, and they should have lost their last five since the bye. And this is a big, 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 big game in terms of the wild card development as well, because, of course, the Giants may miss out on the playoffs via the division, but they're only a game out of the wild card, in which Arizona and, I believe, Minnesota right now sit atop at 6-6. Six and six. If the Giants were to beat Arizona, they'd own the tiebreaker there in the heads-up, meaning if they were able to get eight wins and somehow Arizona won out, maybe we could still get in in terms of a wild card. And I think this is our most winnable game outside of the Dallas contest for a few reasons. One, they're traveling across the country, and that plays a factor. Two... We have to wait and see how the weather report plays out. I've seen, you know, the, some people have said it's going to rain during game time. Other weather reporters, have, you know, have not said that. But Arizona, of course, is a dome team. It's not going to be that cold from what I've seen. It's going to be in the 50s. We'll have to wait and see. But this is the type of team, in my opinion, that the New York Giants should be able to run the football on, and they should be able to do it fairly effectively. The Arizona Cardinals this year ranked 26th in time of possession. That's only trending down over the last three weeks. The Giants ranked 19th, which is high as they've been in years, and that's only trending up. They're averaging 29 minutes and 54 seconds on the time of possession for the year, which is about even. 30 minutes would be half, so they're six seconds away from being dead even. That's after getting up to an atrocious start. The last four, five, six weeks, the Giants have been much better in that area. The Arizona Cardinals, a big weakness of theirs is they surrender three minutes a drive on average on defense, which is the third rank, worst rank in football. And that is going to be the mission for the New York Giants in this game. It's going to be to keep Kyler Murray and that high-powered offense with DeAndre Hopkins off the field as much as possible. And to do that, you run the football, you chew up the clock. It hasn't been rocket science how the New York Giants have won these football games. Arizona surrenders 4.5 yards a carry, which ranks 21st in the league. Last week, we went up against the team in Seattle who was only surrendering 3.7 yards a carry, almost a yard less, and ranked third in the league. And we were able to run 190 yards against them. Now, I'm not going to tell you that we're definitely going to run for 190 yards again, but I expect going in that the New York Giants should surpass 100 yards on the ground for the eighth straight contest as they've been very consistent in that area. Wayne Gallman's been able to get the job done, and with Daniel Jones in there, it should only help. Obviously, he's more of a threat running the football than Colt McCoy, the dual threat with the RPO, and I think the New York Giants stick to the basics. They stick to what's worked. This is not a team that's going to be able to stop the run, in my opinion, at least consistently, against this New York Giants front line, and that's where this game will be won and lost. Also, over the last four games, it's been obvious, outside of the running, how we've won is turnover differential. Arizona on the year is even. They've turned it over 15 times, um, and they've created 15 turnovers. The Giants on the year, I believe, are a plus three, and in more recent history, they've been phenomenal. They are plus eight over their last four games during this winning streak. Ten turnovers created only two times they've put the ball on the ground. So that is a major key in this game as well. The New York Giants must continue to hold on to the football, not commit silly turnovers. Another thing we definitely need to improve on, special teams. That's been a major question mark the last two weeks. We've overcome it, but as we're starting to first better teams, and obviously you have the Ravens and the Browns coming up after this, the Giants are going to have to be hitting on all cylinders to beat these football teams. And... You know, we'll see how it all plays out, but they have to play fundamentally sound. They can't turn the football over. I don't think the Giants are going to struggle establishing the run in this game. I think that's one of the weaknesses of this Arizona football team. As far as the defense goes, well, last week we went up against one of the best offenses in football, and that was the Seattle Seahawks with Russell Wilson. They came in, I think, averaging 30 points a contest. 
And I'm not going to downplay this Arizona offense. It's very good. They're ninth in the league in points, fifth in the league in yards. And they're a potent offense. They've got a great weapon in DeAndre Hopkins. And their, uh, their red zone, both on offense and defense, is actually great. They have the fourth best red zone defense overall, only surrendering, I think, a touchdown about 52% of the time. And they score a touchdown, I think, over 75% of the time, which ranks first in the league. And I think DeAndre Hopkins has a lot to do with that. Hopkins, I think, has five touchdowns. Kirk has six. And the running game, of course, is great with Kyler Murray being a dual threat. The New York Giants will have to keep him contained in the pocket. And even though they average five yards a carry, a lot of that has to do with Murray. Uh, I think they'll be able to stuff the running backs, but you obviously worry about Murray. That's a major question mark in this football game. He could definitely beat you with his legs. One thing I'll say about Murray, every time I watch an Arizona Cardinals game, he is going to make two or three mistakes in this contest. The question is... Will the New York Giants be able to capitalize and hold on to the football and hopefully create some turnovers? Because that's the way we've been able to win some of these games. And my guess is, in the end, the New York Giants are going to come out on top. And I expect them to put up a little more points than in recent history. Now, you forget, before Jones went down, of course, in mid-third quarter against Cincinnati, they had, I think it was six straight contests with over 20 points. I think we're going to be able to get over 20 points. So like I said earlier, Cincinnati's only had... Three games this year where they've given up less than 20, and that was against the Jets, Washington with Haskins, um, and a, the another really bad offense. I can't remember off the top of my head. I said it at the top of the video, though. I think the Giants will be able to get 20 with Jones back on board. I've got the Giants putting up about 26 points. I like the Giants by about, a, I'll say by six. Give me the Giants 26-20. I think they do a good job controlling the clock. I think they get good pressure on Kyler Murray, and I think they're going to force some turnovers. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Murray's going to have his big plays with his legs as long as the New York Giants don't let them get over the top with guys like Hopkins and Kirk, which I don't really worry about with this offense. This offense, if you look at the average air yards completed, one thing that really stood out to me, Kyler Murray on the year is averaging 7.9 air yards a throw, while Jones is only averaging 7.1. Yet... Jones is averaging more completed air yards, so he's almost attempting one less yard per throw, yet his completions on average are 6.1 yards in the air. Murray, to the contrary, is only 5.8, so expect to see a lot of screen passes in this game, expect to see them try to get all their wide receivers involved, and expect to see Kyler Murray use his legs on the ground, but in the end, I think the New York Giants will come out on top. I think they're going to come out with a great game plan. And I just trust Joe Judge a lot more than I trust King, uh, Cliff Kingsbury. I look at two teams. I look at one that's going down. I look at one that's trending up. And Arizona's traveling across the country. Now, of course, the naysayers and the people that are nervous will say this good streak has to end soon. Well, I don't expect it to end this week. I like the Giants to win their fifth straight. I like them to get to six and seven. And I like them to continue to be able to control their destiny with three weeks to play. But we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.